Confident Computing, number 811. What should I do when my information is involved in a breach? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com, where I've been answering technical questions and providing opinions, well, more than just a few opinions, since 2003. Today's issue of the newsletter, Confident Computing number 811, starts off with an article that I think a lot of people will be interested in. We often hear of breaches, data breaches happening on a fairly regular basis, so much so that we've probably almost become, I want to say, immune to them. Um, the fact is we shouldn't be. We really do need to pay attention to where our information is and when it might be getting exposed. What should I do when my information is involved in a breach gives you a quick overview of what you need to do from an account perspective when you find out that you may have been impacted. Also this week, how do I stop email from going to the junk folder in Outlook.com? It's frustrating. You get legitimate emails from legitimate newsletters like, say, this one, and they end up in your junk folder. I'll walk you through some steps that will hopefully decrease the chance that will happen, including exposing another email address that you might not realize is involved in sending you email from newsletters specifically that you can then add to your whitelists. How do I copy a web page? Four approaches and an interesting insight covers exactly that. Different ways to save a web page. Normally, what people are interested in doing is saving a web page for archival purposes or for reference purposes. There are a few approaches, some of them better than others, depending on exactly what it is you're attempting to do. The interesting insight is that it's actually very easy, although not particularly useful, to take a look at the raw HTML behind the web pages and sometimes. Sometimes that actually can be what you use to get the text you're looking for from the web page you want to make a copy of. Finally, this week, how do I correct my Microsoft account, Outlook.com, time zone, the not so obvious location revealed? The reason I say it's not so obvious is because, well, it is kind of sort of hidden. It's moved around a few times over the years, and I actually did this time locate it once again. It's not buried too deeply this time. I'll show you where it is and what you might want to do if you find that the times on your emails are off by multiples of hours, either the ones you receive or the ones you send. We had a great TEH podcast this week. It was our episode number 100. Hard to believe we've been at this for a couple of years already. In celebration, we all turned on our cameras. We managed to get all of the original hosts and an additional guest. So we had five people on camera at the same time using Zoom, of course, because that's what everybody uses. But let's face it, we've been using Zoom since before Zoom was cool. This time, like I said, we turned on the cameras, recorded the entire episode and had a pretty good time doing it. You'll find that at tehpodcast.com. And of course, there's a link directly to the video in today's newsletter. Um, this Saturday, upcoming this Saturday, June the 6th, I'll be doing an Ask Leo live video event. This week, I'm going to talk about the survey results. A couple of months ago now, uh, before the world changed actually, I sent out a survey asking a couple of questions about what the major pain points for technology were for the readers at the time. The results are interesting and I want to take a little bit of time and talk about them, go over them, um, extrapolate, uh, extrapolate a little bit from them and also take your opinions and your questions in real time. Uh, that's next Saturday, Ask Leo Live. It's 2 p.m. United States Pacific Time. Um, askleo.com slash live info has all the information for the live events. And when the date gets closer, we'll be changing askleo.com slash live to point to the actual YouTube page where the live event will happen. You may have noticed a few changes, or as you read through this week's newsletter, you may notice a few changes to the articles that are published on Ask Leo. A couple of weeks ago, I posted an article to my personal blog talking about how um, basically a lot of people are undergoing a lot of difficulty. Um, these are difficult times for 
on not just you know the businesses and the restaurants and so forth, but websites in particular, depending on what you're up to, have suffered fairly dramatically. Um, Ask Leo is no exception. Uh, I'll be blunt. Uh, the thought of actually shutting it all down did cross my mind for a very brief moment. Uh, but no, uh, I've decided to get a little bit more philosophical, and that's what the personal blog post is all about, and use this as an opportunity to help uh, improve Ask Leo and hopefully make it a little bit more successful in the future. So if you've noticed changes, if you've noticed small changes in the way things are displayed, some of the way things are organized, note that that's exactly why they're happening. There probably will be some more changes along those same kinds of line, uh, same lines coming soon. Exactly what they'll be, I don't know. Chances are they'll also be relatively small. These, this, this is not the time for me to be making very large wholesale changes. But just so you know, as things change, I'm always interested in your feedback. You know, you can reply to a newsletter, uh, send email to leo at askleo.com or go to askleo.com slash contact and you can just drop me a message that way as well. A huge thank you, as always, speaking of surviving the pandemic, to the patrons of Ask Leo, because you are a huge part above what makes it possible for me to continue to do what I do. Uh, I cannot understate the importance of your support and my appreciation of it. Uh, thank you for being here and for making it all possible. That's it for this week. As always, I hope you're safe and well. Uh, I will see you again next week. Until then, be kind. Take care.